Well, live from the Power and Electricity World Africa 2018 uh, trade floor, uh, we are privileged to have both a local as well as an internationally, internationally recognized entrepreneur by the name of Abraham Cambridge. Uh, he runs a very in innovative business by the name of Sun Exchange, and they've certainly taken the next step in uh, the new era of models or energy distribution models in order to mitigate energy poverty across the African continent on the one hand, but on the other side also consider cost as well as energy security risk and really making photovoltaic universally available uh, to, the, to the core of the African population, be it private or commercial. Abraham, I can't thank you enough for joining us this afternoon. Uh, certainly been looking forward to this uh, discussion mm -hmm. and today we're going to be getting straight into it mm -hmm. and off the bat yeah. what are you doing differently and not so much your differentiator what is your core value proposition our core value proposition is to enable anybody to be able to own a solar energy asset uh, to date to own a solar plant means you have to have a large amount of capital up front to put it on your roof so you need the money you need the roof space that's excluded the majority of the world's population we've now broken down the solar plant ownership down to a single solar cell which costs around 100 rand per cell for our platform so it's now going solar is now affordable to everybody so i mean our, our, our mission is to enable anybody to own the infrastructure they want to see in the world so to summarize it's effectively off balance sheet even at a domestic level mm. uh, you retain ownership of the uh, capital investment mm -hmm. and on a month-to-month -month rental basis uh, you are effectively renting the use over a time period as opposed to the actual kilowatt hour so we, we pre-sell the solar panels within the project to our membership. We've now got around 4,500 members in 70 countries around the world. They will pre-buy the solar cells for the project. They then lease them to us and we then sub-lease the whole system onto the electric electricity off-taker. We then manage the rental collection from the electricity consumer and then, then pass it back to the solar cell owners wherever they are in the world. And the solar change platform collects and manages the wallets for those customers to collect their earnings. Very good. So it's actually touching on the IoT blockchain mm. uh, type of environment. Yeah, totally. Almost pushing into a digitization space. Yeah, no, we, we actually say that uh, we, we, we're monetizing African sunshine. Mm. Now, we're literally streaming monetized sunshine around the world using cryptocurrency very, in, very in real time. Excellent. I mean, this idea of doing monthly payments is uh, very old-fashioned. Like, we can now deposit value created from sunlight every kilowatt hour into a digital wallet. And it's really around the whole concept of providing a electricity service, mm. but not really uh, charging you per kilowatt hour. It's really the service of being able to have electricity in your home mm. um, at an affordable rate on a monthly right. basis. Mm. So you've really started to change that utility, that conventional and, and municipality model as well, mm. from a unit-based uh, driven initiative into an access-based initiative that works on a time period. Yeah, well, we, well we, we don't deal with households. We deal specifically with commercial industrial because that's right. where we feel most of the value add to sustainable mm. development is going to come from. Um, businesses need reliable, affordable energy, and that and people are at work, business operating during the daytime, which is when solar plants are at their maximum output. Can it reduce the storage? Uh, we don't even need to use storage. We model our systems uh, efficiently so that the 100% of the production is consumed on site. Uh, if there is a net metering program, such as in uh, in Cape Town, then we will use net metering where available. But it's about sizing the system appro appropriately so that it isn't surplus. Well, this is what it's about. It's about the yeah. design. Um, That's right, and it's giving businesses access to clean energy with no upfront cost. At the moment, that's the that's the barrier. Great. Yeah. Now, the renewable energy sector, especially uh, on the on the privatised side of it, uh, doesn't have a phenomenal name. It has a reasonable name, and the reason being, there's been a big flood of uh, entrants into the market, yeah. and they tend to get a lot of their design fundamentally wrong up front. Yeah. Um, what precautions have you put in place to make sure that you uh, providing the right horse for the right course? And of course, uh, not running the clients into financial difficulty. Hmm. In, yeah, uh, I mean, we. Uh, I mean, I, I used to work for a, a major um, uh, engineering consulting firm, mm -hmm. doing technical due diligence on the utility scale solar plants. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we've really applied the, the principles and the due diligence processes that they would apply to very large scale solar systems. And we, we apply that to small commercial systems. So we validate the installers, warranties, the system sizing, the load profile, the guarantees in place, the method statements, the installation, to make sure that the project is going to be a viable long-term project. Uh, so the customers buying solar cells through our platform can be assured that the project has got our, our stamp of approval. And something else that, uh, that, that I feel could be very interesting mm. is the fact that this is uh, universally accessible mm. and one of the big enablers there has to do with the currency 
mm. all the cryptocurrency yeah, that you're yeah. currently dealing with. Can That's you right. give us a bit of insight into that? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're effectively dealing with micro leases, people buying an asset and leasing it over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now, on a global level, with that kind of resolution on payment, would actually be impossible using traditional financial remittance services. Why? Cost, time, uh, and yeah, cost and time, really. I mean, sure. to, for me to send, it would actually be impossible for me to send a cent to the UK. Sure, it, of course. It, it, would be a, it would be a waste of time. With, with Bitcoin, it's possible. You okay. can send millions of a cent if you wish to, and it's now, it's now possible. So that's and what we do. And it flattens the playing field. It's a it's a completely it's a complete game changer in payments, and we now have this 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 internet layer of money, um, this protocol which enables to transact with the whole world at practically no cost. I mean, the, there are transaction fees, but they're coming down all the time as the technology improves. Uh, and it's um, and it gives individuals around the world that wouldn't ever have the opportunity of owning a solar panel to now own one and have it actually located in the best place on earth possible. And from a climate change mitigation perspective, which is what most of the driver to clean energy is, and particularly in the north, um, is for carbon reduction measures. And lo and behold, you put a solar panel in South Africa, you've got four times the carbon saving than if you installed it in the UK. Of course. So of course. if you're doing it for environmental reasons, this is a no-brainer and economic. Sure. So I think we need to shift our discussion now mm. to energy poverty. Mm. And we've got 650 million people across the continent that mm -hmm. haven't switched the lights on before. Mm -hmm. So how do we handle this? How do we position it within, yeah. with, this, within your model? This, this, what, are, this, what are the ideas? This is actually one of the, the biggest challenges that we've set out to solve, which is getting money into those projects. Traditionally, traditional funds, investors, institutions would avoid these kinds of projects because there's so much uncertainty in the electrical offtake and you're dealing with end customers that are either unbanked or unbankable, which is very unfair because we're all human. We all know that we need, we need access to energy. Most people are spending vast proportions of their income on kerosene or running diesel generators, which are incredibly bad for health and not even very effective. Solar power it now at a, at a microgrid level is by far the most effective way of electrifying rural areas. It just needs capital to go into those projects. But you providing that exactly solution? through through democratizing these kind of projects through our platform, people around the world can vote with their money as to whether they want these projects to happen. Very very interesting. So, so, could... so it's way more efficient than going through top down level yeah. funding. So I think what is very important here. Let me feed it back to you. Let yeah. me know if I'm on the, on the right track. So under a general commercial type environment, mm. you've got one specific model, one mm. A that you deal with, mm. and in that regard, it's all about return, etc. Yeah. Then in ten. In, in terms of a crowd participation process, mm. right, you could potentially identify a village that mm -hmm. has been uh, left out of the planning process yep. from an electrification yep. uh, uh, standpoint. Exactly. And, and on, on that basis, you would then receive authority or an instruction or some form of um, uh, instruction, let's, let, let's call it that, that that particular village uh, can be electrified under the existing model and it could potentially be rent free. Put it this way, there's so many really talented, motivated, ambitious entrepreneurs operating on this continent, developing microgrid projects, but they can't get capital. So they haven't got the track record, they haven't got the scale yet to, to make it worth the, the World Bank's time to go and fund these projects. Those developers approach us and say, look, Sun Exchange, we've got this project in Zambia, in Rwanda, in Lesotho, um, it's ready to go. We've got the, the permissions, we've got the chief permission, we've got the system design, we'll onboard it, we'll validate it, we'll mark it to the, world's, the world population to then get the solar panels put into that project and get the whole thing funded. And, so, that's, and that's off the basis that there's a bit of socio-economic sentiment there. Exactly. And it so could, it's, it's could potentially be free of charge. Precisely. So it's, and yep. it's not just about the bottom line. I mean, the microgrid projects, there's a huge amount of variability in predicting, well, no, variability in the consumption and also uncertainties in the prediction of, of the returns because it depends on how much electricity the village consumes. But that variability can be absorbed by, by a retail customer where the social dimension is just as important as the financial. And then you've got the environmental impact as well. Mm -hmm. And people are willing to, to accept uncertainty for the value add that they're getting emotionally through knowing their money is being put to good use. And actually the returns, even a worst case scenario through solar powering a village, you're still probably gonna get a better return than holding your money in a bank. Especially in the UK where you're getting like half a percent interest with inflation higher than interest. So worst case is still gonna be winning. Principally, it's a portfolio approach. Uh, what do you mean by portfolio? Portfolio. Approach? Well, look, you effectively invest in projects, but mm -hmm. you take a share of multiple projects. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. From, from our customers' perspective, yeah. they're 
they're, they're able to position their solar cells, so solar cells across multiple projects. So actually their risk is Zero mitigated. Risk. Yeah. Um, actually, we're now releasing our own cryptocurrency called SunX. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being launched on the 21st of April. Mm -hmm. And the SunX token can be staked into the world's first solar project insurance fund for emerging markets. Very good. That closes out our biggest risk, which is consumer offtake default. Excellent. So this uh, new cryptocurrency is specifically to close that gap. It can also be used to access discounts and bonuses when using our platform. Great. Well, this is from the floor of Power and Electricity World Africa 2018. I must say I, I'm absolutely uh, gobsmacked uh, by the innovation today as well as yesterday. We've seen it both from a public as well as a private standpoint. And, uh, and of course, this is a very clear example of the utilization of cryptocurrency in order to mitigate energy poverty across the continent. It's the best use case of Bitcoin in the world. Best use case. Very, very interesting. And, um, and it also serves the other side of the spectrum, which has to do with the commercial market. Uh, Abraham Cambridge, uh, Sun Exchange founder, CEO, uh, say thank you very much for your time. It's thank been you, absolutely inspiring, and I wish you all the, all the best.